Hello everyone, this video covers uh, the lecture note 16, which is the last video you will see for this semester. The two main objectives covered on this video are going to be logarithmic scales and exponential growth and decay. So this is all related to week 14 and 15. Okay, so before we start, let me refresh your memory on a couple of things. Remember the, or we call these rules. You have these uh, rules in the last quiz. Uh, there were three of them, but the two that we will use the most are this. Remember the log of a times b, you have a multiplication, that this becomes a sum. And also if you have uh, a power, the exponent goes in front. Okay. Now, the reason why we are going to use logarithmic scales on mainly two cases for pH levels and for earthquake magnitude, which is the Richter scale, uh, is that you can compare numbers that they look like very difficult to compare. For example, this is the weight of a well in kilograms. An elephant is actually here uh, and will be some, somewhere there. So you can see that it will be very kind of nonsense to compare these values. But if you change it to logarithmic scales, then it makes more sense to compare. For example, let's say the W is the, the weight of any of these animals. Okay? So let's look to the elephant, for example. An elephant weights around 4,000 kilograms. Now notice that 4,000, you can write it as 4 times 10 to the third power. So therefore, if this is the, the weight of the elephant, so it is equal to the weight, then if you do the logarithmic base 10 of the weight, this will be log of 4 plus log 10 of 3 and by prop the properties we just have right here so this part comes from the first rule the second rule this will go in front so this will be log of 4 plus 3 log of 10 but remember if the the base and the number are the same this is always equals to 1 so technically, this is equals to just 3, and this one is point, point 0.6, this is the calculator. So this is point 0.6 plus 3, so this is pretty much 3.6. So that's how we got this value right here, so this is 3.6. Now, the weight of an ant in terms of kilograms is point zero 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 three kilograms i mean depends which and you're talking about but around that so it's five zeros so you change it to scientific notation this is three point zero times ten to the negative um, five so again if you do the log of the weight for this and this will be log of 3 and then plus minus 5 log of 10 to the 10 power because this will go in front remember this is 1 so this is negative of around negative 5.5 .5. this is actually negative 6 so it should be negative 6 so this is around negative 5.5 .5, which is this value right here so using this scale, you can compare now an ant to a well in a logarithmic scale, and it makes sense. Okay, so now let's look to the pH scale, which is used in chemistry a lot, which is usually used to measure acidity. Now, what is a pH scale? So 
Chemists describe the acidity of a solution by reporting the hydrogen ion, which is the H plus, in molecules per liter. So therefore, this is the concentration of hydrogen. Of for the human blood is this, for the acid rain is this, and for sea water is this. So what will be the pH scale then of something like that? So the pH is defined to be negative log base 10 if you don't write the base remember by default is 10 or the hydrogen concentration so therefore you want to find the ph for the human blood uh, the ph will be equals to minus log of the hydrogen concentration which is a 3.16 times 10 to the negative 8 now, doing exactly the same thing we did for the way of the ant and the elephant, okay, using the same properties. So don't forget the minus sign in front. This is equals to uh, log of 3.16 minus A log 10 of 10, which remember this is always going to be 1. So this will be minus log of 3.16. You use a calculator, this is equals to 0.4949. So let's say that if you round it, that will give you 0.5. Since this is a uh, one, this will be equals to, to 7.5. So that's the pH level of the human blood. Now let's do the exact same thing for uh, acid rain. Remember the pH is gonna be minus the log of the hydrogen concentration, which will be four times 10 to the negative four. So it will be minus, this will be log of four. So you need to calculate for that part and then minus four log 10 of 10, which remember this is Always one. Remember, if there is no base, the base is automatically 10. So don't forget that, that's very important. And also, the log of 10 of 10 is equal to, to 1. So, therefore, if you use the, the calculator, this is around now 3.4. And you should check that. All right, so finally. If we do the exact same thing for sea water, this will be minus log of pi times 10 to the negative 9. By now, it should be obvious this will be log of pi minus 9 times 1. Because remember, this is going to be log 10 of 10 again. And once you use the calculator, this is around uh, 8. Point three, and that's it. You can see it's very, very, very easy. You do need a calculator to compute this, this part, though. And remember, the base is ten. All right. So now let's look to the Richter scale, which is the measurement of the magnitude of an earthquake. So by definition, this is equals to log of I, which means intensity divided by by S. So S is going to be the intensity, which is measured in the seismograph and s and this is important s is always going to be 10 to the negative 4 okay which always means 0 0.0001 which is usually called the standard earthquake or the magnitude of the standard earthquake okay the important part is that this is always going to be this. Now, if you remember from um, um, property three, which we have in use, you can rewrite the formula like this too. And this will be I minus log of S. And this actually will be more, more useful because this will be log of whatever the intensity is minus. So the intensity is, is given but log of s this will be log of 10 remember the base is 10 of 10 to the negative 4 
So this will be log of the intensity and the minus and minus gonna go in front, so this will be just four. So this formula is the same as this one, but this would maybe more more useful. Alright, so let's look to the following example, which says the following in 1989, Loma Prieta earthquake that shook San Francisco have a magnitude, so this is M, so it's telling you what M is. Uh, of 7.1 in 1906 the San Francisco uh, in San Francisco have a, also an earthquake of magnitude 8.1 so the question is uh, how much more intense was the 8.1 than the 7.1 and it's pretty much the kind of question you're gonna have on the test so this is what we have first in um, 1989 the magnitude was 7.1 so therefore that means that 7.1 is equals to log of i plus 4 which means the log of i is equals to 3.1 which means that the intensity for this earthquake if you change from log to exponent, this will be 10 to the 3.1. So this was the intensity for that earthquake. Now, if you look to 1906, the magnitude was 8.3. So if we do the exact same thing. This will be log of i plus 4. So this means that the log of the intensity for this one is a 4.3, which means that the intensity has to be low, I mean 10 to the 4.3 power. Therefore, if you wanna see how much stronger this one than this one was, you pretty much divide the, the intensities. So 10 to the 4.3 divided by 10 to the 3.1 this is equals to 10 to the uh, 1.2 which is around 16 so this one was 16 times stronger than the one from 1989 okay here remember we're using the property the b to the n divided by b to the m is equals to this is you subtract the, the exponents that's it all right so now we're going to do something different this is exponential growth and decay so exponential growth means we have this graph which we saw that before so that's grow if it's going down this will be a decay so let's look to this table right here. It says, under ideal conditions, a certain bacteria population doubles every five years. Initially, there are 1,000, okay? So this is what it means. At time zero, the population is 1,000. Notice that this will be 1,000 times two to the zero power. Then in five hours, this is gonna double, so this will be 2,000 which is the same thing as 1,000 times 2 so it will be it will make more sense to write it this way so it will be 1,000 times 2 so therefore it will be 1,000 times 2 to the first power okay which notice you can also write this as 2 to the 5 over 5 which is 1 then 5 more hours or 5 hours later which will be 10 this will be double this, so this will be 1,000 times 2 times 2 more, so this will be 1,000 times 2 to square, which is the same thing as 1,000 times 2, but now it will be 10 over, over 5. So then it will keep going that way, n of t is going to be equals to 1000 times 2 and then t over 5 
So that would be the, the equation. All right, so this would be the answer for this one. Part B says, um, how many bacteria are there in the colon after 10 hours? Well, after 10 hours, this should be four times 1,000, which would be 4,000. So you plug in 10 in here. Here you are given the input, the 10 hours, and asked to get the output, which is the number of bacteria. Part C says, after how many hours will the bacteria reach um, 100,000? All right, so here, remember the formula is NT, N of T is equals to 1,000 times 2 T over 5. So therefore the question is how long it's going to take to reach 100,000. So now they give you the, the output and you want to know what the input is. So this is 1,000 times 2 T over 5. So from here, if you divide by 1,000 on both sides, This implies that you will have 2 t over 5 is equals to 100. All right, so then you change from log to exponent, which I told you you're going to be doing that over and over. Remember, you have b to the x equals to z. You want to change it to exponent. Well, let's say this is t. You want to have log b of c equals to t. So in this case, the base is 10, so it would be log 2 or 100 is equals to t over 5. So that means that t will be 5 times log 2 or 100. Now, there is a small issue here because calculators, most of them don't have base 2, but that can be fixed pretty easily using this. You can just use base 10, so it will be log of 100 divided by log of 2. So this is called change of base so you're changing it to base 10 and then you use the calculator and you should definitely check this this is around 33 so it will take uh, 33 weeks or days whatever the units were uh, hours or hours to get to 100,000 okay so in general notice that this is the equation we we had where NT is the initial population and A is the doubling time. There's another way to write this equation, but since this is how the book is doing it, we wanna stick to this formula. But there is another way to, to do this. Just in case you take a class later and they have a different formula. It's technically the same formula, just written in slightly, slightly different. Now this formula can easily be adjusted to instead of doubling like triples. So in this case, the formula will be this. If the initial population is 100, then instead of 2, this will be a 3 because it's tripling. And it will be t over 15 because it takes 15 hours to, to triple. So this will be the new equation. So the point is there is nothing special about doubling. That's the most common one. But you can easily say it triples or quadruples and so forth. So what we did right now in the previous example was exponential growth, in which, like I told you at the beginning, the exponential function is going up, so it's positive. Now, exponential decay, it means is decreasing. And look at the formula, it's technically the same as doubling, except that you have the, the minus sign. And if you look at it this way, it will make sense. M of T will be the initial amount. Notice that 2 to the negative T over H is the same thing as 1 half t to the, to the power of t divided by h, where h now is going to be the half time. 
but before we do an example, let's see a table so you can compare yourselves. So the problem says the following Polonium 210 has a half-life of 140 days. So if you start with 300, then the formula for this should be 300 times one half to the zero power. Then uh, after 140 days, this should be half, which is 300 times one half. So it will be 300 times one half to the first power. Then if you go another 140 days, which will be now 280, so it will be 300 times one half, which is 150 times one half. So this will be 300 times one half to square, which will be now um, 280 divided by 140. Well, here this one will be 140 over 140 so that you can follow the same pattern as the previous one. Okay. So therefore, in general, we're going to get this, this formula, where t is uh, the time and h is how long it takes to, to double. So for this particular example, m of t is going to be m0, which is 300, then 1 half, and then this will be t over 140 or and this is exactly the same thing 300 times 2 to the minus t over 140 so whatever makes more sense to you all right so part b says the following how much uh, uh 210 polynesian if it was not plutonium or polynesian remains after 200 days Okay, so now they're telling you the value for uh, for t, so they're giving you the, the input, and you want to know what is the, the output. So you want to find m of 200, so this will equal to 300 times 1 half to the 400 over 140, which is equals to 300 times 1 half to the... 1.4 and this is around um 111.45 okay so that's the answer all right now the next part says how long will it take to decay to 200 so in this case they are giving you the output and you want to know what the input is so now you have 200 is equals to 300 times one half to the t over 140 and what you want to find is the value for for t okay so from here we have the one half t over 140 the this should equals to 200 over 300 which means the one half t over 140 is equals to two thirds so now you change from log to to exponent we will get the log of one half of two thirds is going to be equals to t over 140 okay or the t is equals to 140 times log of one half of two over three and if you use a calculator you will get around 81.89 which is 82 days so in general uh, for exponential decay the half-life, which means how long it takes to get half of what you originally start with, 
uh, is given by this formula. Remember that you can also write it as m0 times 1 half t over h, the exact same thing, where m0 is the initial amount that you start with, and h is the half time. This is the half time. And that's it, people. This is the last thing we do. We are done.